Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And on today's episode of Ravens Daily, we're going to talk about some outrageous tweets from a certain content creator, actually one of my favorite content creators. We're going to talk about the Ravens spending, how and where they're spending their money, and where it should be going. Third, we're going to talk about uh, OTAs and 10 guys we should take a look at from OTAs according to the Baltimore Ravens website. And then finally, we're going to talk about who's at OTAs and probably more importantly, who's not. Welcome back to Sip the Films. Let's go. So Brent Coleman dropped a tweet earlier today and um, we're actually probably last night um, talking about some old video. Now, if you don't know who Brent Coleman is, a huge successful NFL content creator uh, has his own channel, has a bootleg, po- bootleg football podcast, his own channel, and does some work for the NFL too. But he dropped a tweet because he gets old film, old all 22, and it says, um, now that I've spent the entire, enough late nights looking at early 2000s all 22, but no reason other than just having fun, I think I've got enough snaps in me to have an actual opinion on this. And it just isn't me shit posting. Walter Jones over jo- Jonathan Ogden. That's the first trigger warning from, from Brent Coleman. Um, I would love to see him with some video evidence of why he chose Walter Jones over J.O. Now, not slamming his opinion because I respect him a whole heck of a lot. But um, I'm sure with him putting that tweet out, there's going to be some kind of video evidence to support his statement. But then he comes back with a second tweet and says, I think I've landed on Patrick Willis over Ray Lewis. Mm. Now, Pat Pat Willis was a demon. He, he was really, really, really good. But over Ray? How, how many linebackers can you really put over Ray? Honestly, in, in, the, in the comment section. How many linebackers can you really put over Ray? And I'm sure some people will have one or two guys, you know, maybe three, probably none. But ain't very many linebackers you can put over Ray. And I don't know if Patrick Willis one of them. And I'm not saying that to say Patrick Willis was not good. Patrick Willis was a dog. Him and Navarro Bowman side by side, shh, unreal. Unreal. So better than Ray? Yeah. Yeah. We'll see, but I, I, I think he's going to have some kind of video evidence to bag up those tweets. I just, I'm going to wait on it because somebody, somebody tweeted me, get him, coach. I'm like, no, I respect him too much. He's kind of calculated in his movements. So I'm going to wait to see what kind of video evidence he got before I, you know, go down that road. All right, the second topic I want to talk about is the Ravens spending habits and where they're spending their money because we know at this time of year, a lot of teams are close to their cap number. They probably got a few, you know, little tricks up their sleeve where if they want to sign, you know, a June 1st cut, they might, they might can pull a re, restructuring or something that they might can pull out. But for the most part, everybody's money is where it's going to be for the year. Now let's take a look at where the Ravens ranked at each position as far as where they're spending their money. And what I mean by that is like, well, I'll just get into it. i just get into it. Starting with the quarterback position. NFL ranked, we're ninth. So that means there's eight quarterback rooms, not necessarily eight quarterbacks, but eight quarterback rooms that are getting paid more than the Baltimore Ravens quarterback room. So total spending is 36, a little over $36 million, and NFL rank is ninth. On to the running back room, where, you know, we just added Derrick Henry. We're eighth in spending in the running back room, uh, almost $11.5 million. So in that running back room, that's Derrick Henry, that's Justice Hill. That's Keith Mitchell, that's Rasheen Ali, and a few other guys. But right now, we're sitting at the eighth ranked um, as far as spending in the NFL at the running back position, $11.5 million. At the wide receiver position, spending $19.7 million, 27th. So we're near the bottom in the NFL at spending money at the wide receiver position. Okay. We spend just under $20 million, $20 million at the wide receiver position. And we got some of the top tier wide receivers making $20 million. So 
We'll see. We'll see. We got a lot of young guys. A lot of young guys. Bateman. Uh, we picked up Tez Walker. Zay. You know, all those guys on the rookie deal, except for Bateman just restructured with that crazy deal because he kind of screwed himself. Uh, you got uh, Tylen Wallace. You got um, Aguilar. So, we're toward the bottom in spinning the wide receivers, but we got a young, lot of young guys, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Tight end room, which I think is one of our strongest positions in the uh, NFL, and the spending shows that. We're fourth, and likely still on a rookie deal. They're likely Kolar and Mark. We're spending $21.5 million in the tight end room. That's the fourth highest in the NFL. Fourth highest. So, so far, it looks like where your money's at, that's where your production's at. Quarterback and tight end right here. Looking at the O-line. We're 22nd in the O-line spending. $40 million. That's five guys, $40 million. 22nd in the O-line spending. But you look, think about it, we're about to have three new starters there. Um, Rosen Garden is probably going to start. Uh, Voorhees is probably going to start. And this technically would be both of them rookies. And then Ben Cleveland is still on a rookie deal. So only get, and, well, and Linda Bump still on a rookie deal. So the only guy that may potentially start that has gotten paid is Ronnie. It's Ronnie. Because everybody else is still, like, if those other names I just called out start, they still on rookie deals. Voorhees, Linda Bump, Ben Cleveland, uh, Rose, Rosen Garden. So. We'll see. We'll see how it pans out. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Defensive tackle. Which we know, you know, we got, we got some okay guys. We don't have a star there, but we got some okay guys there. We're 16th in spending at the defensive tackle position with just under $24 million. Matter BK recently got a nice chunk of change. Uh, his cap hit for this year is $11 million. So, you know, that'll go up as he continues to play in Baltimore. But um, this year's cap hit is only $11 million. But total spending in that room is just under $25 million, and that ranked 16th in the NFL. Let's go to Edge Russia. We re signed Van Noy, got Ojabo, got Owe, uh, got Robinson. Um, I just drafted Adisa Isaac. On the edge, we're only spending, we're spending just under 14, just under $15 million. $14.6 million, and that ranks 30th in the NFL. There are only two teams that spend less money at the edge position than the Ravens. Let's see how this goes. Let's see. Moving on to linebackers. Now, we if we had to kept Queen, we'd probably be number one. But we we let him move on because of just other issues with money and having drafted a guy that maybe take his place. And right now we're eleventh in Spending at the linebacker position, inside linebacker position. Spending just under $20 million, 19.6. Uh, Roquan's cap hit this year is 13.5. So you mix all your guys in there. It's Roquan, it's Trent Simpson, Ross, um, and any of the other guys we just picked up to play linebacker. 11th ranked in the NFL, 11. And most of that is Roquan. Most of that is Roquan. All right, at cornerback position, we're fourth in cornerback spending. Marlowe got that huge contract. Marlowe's cap hit is 22.8. 22.8. So that means the other, however many cornerbacks we got, I think it's like six or seven, $15 million. We rank fourth in cornerback spending. That's where the money is. The money's on the defensive side. We've been saying it for a long time. Go to safeties. We're fourth in safeties also. $25 million. $25.8 million. And keep in mind, we're fourth. Hamilton's on a rookie deal. Hamilton's on a rookie deal. Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, those are pretty much the two names. But we're fourth, and, and Hamilton's on a rookie deal. So look at all that cheese Marcus getting. That, that's crazy. But your, your, your money's always been on the defensive side. We need to get some receivers to help our boy out. And sometimes we got to pay somebody that's experienced rather than just take, keep taking our chances with rookies. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right, next up. The 10 guys we want to take a look at as far as or keep an eye on at Ravens OTAs this week, which started today. First guy, Trent Simpson. Can he live up? Can he fill the shoes that Patrick Queen left? He has a bunch of similar traits to, to Pat Queen. Um, real fast, real explosive, uh, extremely good athlete. 
Can he be disciplined enough to fill that role and play Robin to Roquan's Batman? Number two on the list, Ben Cleveland. A guy that I feel like should have had the, the opportunity to play left guard last year but for some reason, unbeknownst to me or a bunch of others in Ravens flock, he can't play the left side or they didn't give him a chance on the left side. But he got a chance this year. Zeitler's gone. Right guard is yours. Can you pick it up? Can you keep, can you keep the job? We'll see. It starts with OTAs. Number three, Voorhees. Another guy that like a bunch of people been saying Voorhees is this, Voorhees is that. But we haven't seen Voorhees take a snap since for two years. Because he got hurt at the combine last year. Set out this whole year. So technically this is his rookie year. But I'm hoping he can get back to form because he's as strong as a, a, a bull. Hopefully the footwork and all that stuff works out. And we'll have a good combination with him and Ben Cleveland at guard this year. We'll see though. Number four. Derrick Henry. How is Derrick Henry going to fit, you know, in the Ravens scheme? And I think it's going to be a seamless fit. We just run more outside zone, more stuff that he was uh, accustomed to running. And if you have not seen a video, where I talked about some certain schemes we should add to, to complement Derrick Henry. There's a chance for you to go do that. And I'll put that in one of these corners. Oh, wrong hand. <laughs> this is funny. Oh, in one of these corners, I put that in. But uh, Derrick Henry is number four. Number five, David Ojabo. Um, again, another guy that we drafted hurt. Hadn't played very many snaps. But at this point, because of what we have on the edge, he got to go. He got to be productive in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And uh, hopefully he can stay healthy. And you can't make the club in the tub. And he, I'm sorry. Yeah, you can't make the club in the tub. And he always in the tub, meaning the tub is the training room. So hopefully he'll get his stuff together and his body will hold up and he can go out and produce. Because before he got hurt, Ojabu was solid. He was solid. Now, I don't know if that being on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson helped him, but he was solid before he got hurt. And hopefully he can get back to that form and he's healthy um, this season. Number six, the aforementioned Roger Rosengard. So, you just these are the three names that I mentioned earlier about maybe starting on that old line. Voorhees, Cleveland, Rosengard. Three new guys. Three new guys. He is a he played at the University of Washington where they were pass heavy. So I think pass blocking will he will be okay there. My thing is how well or how how well can he run block? Because he need a few bricks in his pocket. Even though he, he ran the fastest 40 at the combine, that means nothing. You know, NFL offensive lineman. He need a few bricks in his pocket. I'm pretty sure the scheme won't be too hard. And um, we'll see what happens with um, our three new starters <laughs> up front. Well, it's going to be three new starters regardless of his three guys I, I just mentioned. Next, rookie, Tez uh, Walker. Can he be the guy to stretch the defense and allow everybody else to work underneath, allow us not to see a lot of eight, nine, ten-man boxes, and – I don't think Tez has to catch a bunch of balls. He just needs to, to run a bunch of deep routes, catch one or two, and now the threat of him doing that gets people back, which will help everything else up. Tez, in my opinion, may be the key to unlocking this offense like completely, completely, because that vertical stretch he, he adds to the team. Next up, our Darius Washington. Now, a guy with a ton of promise, but just, again, can't stay healthy. He can play your, your nickel corner. He can play some safety. He's a, a, a Swiss Army knife. But you can't be a Swiss, Swiss Army knife in the training room. So hopefully, you know, he puts it all together this year. And I don't doubt that he's put it together. His body just been failing. And that's, I think I'm starting to repeat myself. So what's going on? Why are these people's bodies failing? Are we? Never mind. Never mind. Number nine. Jalen Lomba Davis. I feel like I'm going to repeat myself. He with a ton of talent. Can't stay in out the training room. Um, early in the season last year was getting some some reps when, you know, when Marlon was not around or not not participating or whatever. But faded, faded, faded fast. I think this is his last chance to try to prove himself because you got them young corners. We drafted two young corners. Prove yourself and get up out of there. Same with our Darius. Prove yourself or we're about to move you up out of there. 
And then number 10, Lamar Jackson. And number 10 is going to kind of go in with my last topic anyway. So we saw a bunch of pictures or whatever from OTAs today and, you know, showed Derrick Henry running around doing his thing, showed, um, I think, TJ Tampa on some pictures, Brandon Washington on some pictures. I didn't see Lamar. Don't know why. Not accusing, not making an accusation. Just know I didn't see him. I know he was at the Preakness Saturday. And the Preakness is in Baltimore. Maybe he'll be there tomorrow. Let's see. Hopefully he'll be there to get some chemistry with uh, number seven. Because we all say that they lack chemistry. Now, I don't know what they do. Well, we know Bateman ain't been there. Bateman been way on the West Coast somewhere. But chemistry is a big thing for me. And so I just can't tell a grown man what to do with his time. But I just wish he was there. I'll, I'll, leave, it like, I'll leave it at that. Leave it at that to get as much reps in and practice in with the with the guys as possible. But he grown, do your own thing. It's just my two cents. Um, and man, that's all I got for you, man. I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. If you have not liked the video, like the video. Hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when the rest of these videos drop throughout the 2024 offseason. OTA starts today, tomorrow, and the next day. And um, maybe we'll get some kind of Footage, even though we got a good little bit, but that's all I got for you, man. Peace and love, and I'll see y'all soon.